Hey there. Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Welcome to Bethany Gospel Hall Podcast. Today, we have a special message preached by Pastor Dixon, myself, on the title, A Storm is Coming. This message was preached at a funeral service for one of our late members, Brother Francis. Some people affectionately know him as Yama. But at this funeral, I spoke on a storm is coming. So many times we prepare in life for retirement. We prepare to build a house. We prepare to start a business. We prepare for when our health starts failing. We, we prepare for um, retirement. But how many of us prepare for death? So this message, I hope you enjoy or pass it along. If you're a Christian and you know someone who is not saved, this is a good message that you can pass it on to them, share with them, so they can listen and perhaps the Holy Spirit will convict and convert them. But before we go into the message, if you like the content on this podcast, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and tell a friend. Let us get into the message. Now this afternoon I want to talk about a storm is coming. A storm is coming. Now, the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 9, 27, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. First of all, I want to look at the certainty of the storm. It is an appointment. And we cannot escape the appointment. It is not like you, you, you set up a doctor's appointment and something happened and you cannot go and you call the doctor. I cannot make it. No. It is a certain appointment. Once to die. And after that, the judgment. This appointment is so certain that when you take the statistic one of every individual die. We all must die. Death is certain. You cannot escape it. 
You cannot run from it. It's gonna come. Not only the certainty of the storm, the priority of the storm. We made preparation when we hear storm is coming. Therefore, thus, this is Amos speaking to the children of Israel. Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. Just like how we prepare when we hear of a storm is coming. Prepare to meet your God. Make preparations. Oh, we do everything in this life. But one thing we fail to prepare for, to meet our God. One of these days, all of us will stand before God. And we're going to give an account of every decision that we make in our life. Prepare to meet your God. Yes. So we see the certainty of the storm. The priority of the storm. But the unpredictability of the storm. Today we have all kind of sophisticated equipment, satellites in space. We can track the storm. We can um, negotiate the weather pattern, the steering currents, how this um, storm is going to come. But that is uncertain. When I said unpredictable, we don't know. Are we not prepared? Proverbs 27 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what the day might bring forth. We don't know, or we know, prepare to meet your God. It's appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment, prepare. The unpredictability of it. I always say there's only one way to come into this world. To the birth canal of your mother. But there are millions of ways to go out. You know, I always tell people this. We think that we have our life in our hands and we have everything under control. Answer me this question. And if you can answer this question, did you have a say when you're going to be born? Did you have a say where you're going to be born? Did you have a say in what gender you're going to be? And ladies and gentlemen, do you have a say how you're going to die? Can you answer me these questions? You see that we are not in control as much as we think. The most existential questions, we cannot answer them. We have no control. Only God. Prepare to meet your God. Show you how limited we are. That's why the Bible always said, as we look on the unpredictability of the storm, Psalms chapter 19, verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days. Life is short. The old I get to see as well, like, like, like time just sped up. Teach us to number our days, every step that we take, every motion that we take, death is right there. We don't think about it, but it's there. T 
teach us to number our days so that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. What is the most important thing in life? The story was told of a man in the book of Luke. Well, Jesus Christ was given a parable of this man who had wealth, he amassed wealth, and in amassing this wealth, he had barns. And he decided, well, you know, I'm going to build bigger and better. The economy was good, business was booming. I want to expand. Nothing wrong with that. To be honest with you, nothing wrong with that. But look what the Bible said. Come now ye who say, today or tomorrow will we go such and such and spend ye there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mess, this is in James, that appears for a little time and then vanish. Instead, you are to say, if the Lord's will, we will live and do this and that. And this is what God said in Luke that I preference earlier. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared. Whose will that be? Uh, yes, you plan. Yes, I want to get bigger and better. But God said, you fool, in your planning, you did not put me in the equation. You fool, your soul is required of you this night. Then all that you have, who shall it be? We scrape, we push, we struggle to amass wealth. Success, profit in this life, not realizing the mossy hands and the truly coldness of death is right there. And at any moment, you're gone, and then all that you have, what happens? What happened? Start to think about eternal things. What shall it profit a man if he gain this whole world and lose his soul? What profit is it? You know, I share in your grief. Oh, a year and two months, my wife passed away, and I know how hard it is. We had plans. We had things in motion. But then came that great intruder called death. But thank God she was prepared to meet her God. But what about you? Family members, your father, your uncle, your grandfather is pleading to you. I want to see you prepare to meet God so we can have a great reunion. That is the message. Prepare your heart. So now we not only see the certainty, the priority, the unpredictability, now the reality of the storm. Job 5, 7. Yet, man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. 
we come into this world full of trouble. And as the sparks fly upwards, you know what he's talking about, the imagery? When you do something, you see a spark, it a spark and it's gone. Just gone, it's fleeting, it's just for a moment, it's gone. A spark, a flash of fire, it's gone. Job 14 1 said, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. This world that we're living in is full of trouble. Prepare to meet your God. Job also said in chapter 121, and he said, Naked. I came from my mother's womb, reading from the ESV, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked you came into this world, naked you shall leave. You cannot take anything with you. So why is quiet? No, nothing is wrong in trying to be successful. But remember, hold those success with loose hands because they are going to be taken away by death. And the, the scary thing about it, you don't know who might use it. And even if you leave a will to someone else, you don't know how they might use and abuse your hard work. So naked, naked, naked you came into this world. I've never seen a baby born with clothes on. Naked you shall return. Ladies and gentlemen, when the wood of the cradle hit the marble of the tomb, what would you do? Where would you go? So we see, not, all, not only that, as I conclude, The urgency of the storm. As it is said, Hebrews 3.15, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts in the rebellion. Today, the word of God is being preached. You think you come to a, a funeral service. But ladies and gentlemen, it can be what you call a new birth service. The Bible said you must be born again. You can be born spiritually this afternoon. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. He didn't say tomorrow. He didn't say next week. Today. The urgency. Let me tell you something. You know what is Satan's number one ploy? Satan is not going to tell you don't believe in God. Satan is not going to tell you, well, you know, don't go to church, but let me tell you this, because many people go to church, and let me tell you something, a lot of them are going to die in the church pew and go to hell. It is not in church. I don't care if you go to Bethany. I don't care if you go to the Methodist church. I don't care if you go to the Baptist church. Let me tell you something. You can die a church sinner. Unless you have that relationship.
relationship with Jesus Christ. Unless you ask God to come into your heart and save you. The Bible said, if you believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Make sure that your calling and election is sure. Make sure a storm is coming. Do not harden your heart. Today, once ago we used to say, today we're here, tomorrow we're gone. Now you can suggest a second we're here, a second we're gone. And young people, it seems as though it's the young people are dying fast. The green mango jumping off the tree. Prepare to meet your God. So many of us make sure we have the best life insurance. We make sure we have the best medical insurance. But ladies and gentlemen, the assurance that we need to have is blessed assurance. <laughs> Jesus is mine. That's the best. Not insurance, but assurance. Make sure you have that. So I am pleading to you this afternoon. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, please ask him to come into your life and save you. Say, so Lord, I know I'm a sinner. All of us are sinners, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible said, but God commended his love towards us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. And if we just put our trust and our confidence on that promise, the Bible said, you shall be saved. Do not procrastinate. Satan number one ploy, as I said. He will make you think that you are religious. You see, there's a difference between religiosity, well, I go to church. There's a difference between relig religiosity and church. A lot of us have churchianity. But we don't have Christianity. We don't have Christ. And Satan will tell you, man, go to church, nothing wrong with that. But when you come to the big question, put it off. Satan wants you to kick the can down the road, put it off. Because he don't know when death is going to come on you. Um, procrastination, he wants you to procrastinate, put it off. Man, you're not ready yet, put it off. Put it off. And why are you putting it off? Death knock on your door. And Satan have you and say, ha, ha, ha. Procrastination is the thief of time. And that is Satan's number one pride. Put it off. But the Bible time is, now is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, hard not your heart. Because the Bible said, my spirit shall not always strive with men. So if you're under conviction, let me tell you something. If people get served in this, in this, in this funeral service, oh, what a blessing. I'm sure Yama in heaven is saying, Yaman, I bring some with me. If my death was a big testimony and people got served, oh, glory. So children, sons, daughters, grandchildren, Nephew, niece, brothers and sisters, if you don't know Jesus Christ, the best blessing or the best gift you can give to your father is to make him sure that when death approach, approach you, you know you will see him. What a blessing. Don't let him cry in the portal of heaven and say, Lord, she was not saved. And in hell, she lifted up her eyes. Do it 
before it's too late. And to the Bruy family, it's not going to be easy because I'm still grieving. But the Bible said, do not sorrow as those who do not have hope, especially those of us in Jesus Christ. Once we have hope in Christ, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, the sting of death. You know, for a sin, you know who feel the sting of death the most? Those who leave behind. They're gone, they're in, in the hands of God. But those of us who leave behind, we feel that sting, that missing person. But the person who died in Christ, there is no sting. They're embracing in the arms of Lord. Lord, let us, we thank you for your word. And I pray as the word of God went forth that your Holy Spirit will convict and convert those who don't know you in a real and personal way. And dear Lord, it is no chance, no accident that some of us are here. Those who don't know you because it's an opportunity you guide them so that they could be under the influence of the word of God so they can turn their heart to God. And for those of us who are saved, help us to look at our lives because we too, we have to stand before God, be my seat. The Bible said, and all our works will be tried and we have to give an account what we do in this life. Dear Lord, just have your way. The rest of the proceedings of this service, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. What a powerful message of invitation. Very evangelistic, even at a funeral. As someone said, the missing ingredient in that funeral was an altar call. But if you listen to this message and you feel convicted in your heart and you would like to be saved, you can contact our church and we can show you from the Bible how you can be saved. Or speak to a Christian that you know that can show you from the word of God how you can be saved. And as again, a storm is coming. Prepare to meet your God. Now before we leave, remember, if you like the content on this channel, please remember to like, subscribe, and tell a friend. And also, if you are in St. Kitts, you can pay us a visit at Bethany Gospel Hall, Main Street, Sandy Point, right across from National Bank. Again, have a blessed week and may the Lord's blessings be with you until next time. All rights reserved.